Florida's Department of Health is looking into claims that a Gulf Coast school made hundreds of people sick from diseases like cancer. Health officials are asking alumni and faculty of the school affected by cancer to submit their health records. So far, the department says there's no evidence Bayshore High School is the source of any disease clusters. Manuel Bajorcas is in Bradenton, Florida, south of Tampa, where some community members say the evidence is clear. Manuel, good morning. Good morning. This is where Bayshore High School stood. It was torn down in the late 90s in place of a bigger campus next door. But suspicions about health problems linking back to the old property have been around for decades. Last week, the school district mailed these forms to thousands of former students asking anyone who's become sick to tell their stories. I can't look at a yearbook. I don't see classmates. I see victims. Cheryl Joza graduated from Bayshore High School in 1981, two years after her older sister, Terry. In 1999, doctors diagnosed Terry with a rare type of leukemia. She died six months later. A few years after her sister's death, Joza learned another Bayshore classmate had also died of leukemia. She said a light went off in her head. You would talk to this person, they would say, well, so-and-so's sister died of you know, leukemia. The numbers that I have recorded are from word of mouth. By speaking to people, people writing to me. Joza believes the cases at Bayshore constitute a cancer cluster. My sister's class of 235, we have four leukemias recorded and three of those have passed away. The CDC defines a cancer cluster as a greater than expected number of cancer cases that occurs within a group of people in a geographic area over a period of time. Over the last 13 years, Joseph says she has tracked nearly 500 cases linking Bayshore alumni and employees to cancer, autoimmune diseases, or children with birth defects. It is very daunting to find the smoking gun or the cause of a cluster. Dr. Thomas Burke teaches at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. To define a cancer cluster is you have to be sure of the diagnosis of people. You have to be sure of the number of cases. You have to look at the time involved. Paul Peducey was in Joseph's class. Doctors found a tumor pressing on his spine in April and diagnosed him with hairy cell leukemia. It was an agriculture class and we, uh, we grew strawberries out in the big field. I ate those strawberries, played in the field. I think there's a good chance that it could have come from you know, something out of the ground. But years of soil and groundwater testing on the school property have found no significant contamination. There was contamination a mile away at an old machine shop, but the county believes it did not impact the school. Manatee County and the school board have asked the health department to survey alumni and staff to determine whether a cluster exists. Dr. Diana Green is the school district superintendent. The facts at this point indicate over the last 15 years that location has been tested numerous times and each time it comes back with a negative indication related to a possible cancer cluster. This is a picture of my son. He would be 42 today. For community members and family of the sick and dead, the search for answers has been long. In 2014 of October, I was diagnosed with brain cancer stage three. Last April, many voiced their frustration at a county commission meeting. When this is all said and done, I mean, they'll, they'll come up with their findings. If they don't necessarily reflect what you believe, do you keep going? I will keep going till we find out what it is. We have a right to know what we were exposed to. Cheryl says she suffers from autoimmune diseases herself. The health department will stop collecting medical information at the end of February. It will then be transferred over to the University of Miami, and results are expected six months after that. Gail? Mystery they need to solve there. Thank you very much, Manuel.